Hey guys, Carlos Perez. Today we are going to do a more in detail update. We are not going to be doing the tracked account, only the update for the build and the IPTV service. So the first thing you want to do before we get involved with the update is you're going to want to go and get your username and password from the IPTV service. So we're going to go into the Pyro Media Center. We're going to wait for that to load. And then we're going into the IPTV app and get our username and password so we can put it inside. Once we have that inside, then we'll be able to proceed with updating our build. So as you can see right now, up in the top left corner, it says that we're on version 2.3, whereas the scrolling message tells you that we're actually on version 2.4. So that's how you would know that there is an update and you have an older version running. So as you see, October 22nd, 2017, we're up to version 2.4. So looking in the left-hand corner, when you see version 2.3, you know that's old. So we're going to go over to our settings. We're going to go down to add-ons, my add-ons, and then up to video add-ons, where we're going to go into the IPTV add-on and get our username, our username and password out of it. So we're going to click on it go to settings and then you see the username and password right here you want to write that down and once you have that written down we can proceed in setting up the front end of everything to update your build so we're going to exit out of this and we're going to hit exit on this sorry we're going to hit exit on the exit um, panel And we're going to wait for everything to shut down. Once we have that complete, now we're going to go and do the update. So we want to completely erase the information that's on the Media Center now. So we're going to go into our settings. We're going to go over to our apps. And we're going over to the PMC. That's the Pyro Media Center right there. We're going to click on it. And we're going to go down to clear data. So right now it's at 811 megabytes. We're going to hit OK on it. OK again. And we're going to wait for everything to zero out. Once it zeroes out, then we're going to unplug the box, wait for 60 seconds, plug it back up, and then load the build on it. So we're going to go back to the main menu. We're going to hit the cursor because we want to go down. You see the cursor here moving. We want to go down and you know what I'm gonna turn this cursor off because some reason when I'm doing it on the t on the computer and recording this it brings up to the screen so you want to t turn the cursor on and go all the way down to the power button that's right under the plus sign so you see it looks like a little microphone speaker to the left of it and then to the right of it are arrows going down and then there's the power button so when I turn that on, for some reason, the recording shows that I'm in the back end of the settings. So I'm going to pause this, but know that you're going to turn on your cursor and go down to the power button to shut it down. So if you're seeing other screens, don't pay, pay no attention to it. You know, so I'm going to hit the cursor again and I'm going to go down and then over. And then I'm on the power button. I'm going to click OK on it. You're going to see the little menu come up, which you're not seeing on the computer, but it comes up with the power, the sleep, and the reboot. I'm going to turn off the cursor. So I'm going to turn off the cursor. Um, this is what you're going to see with the cursor on, but I guess when it transmits to the computer to record, it shows differently. So you're now going to just go to power off, shut it down. When it shuts down completely, you're going to pull the power, wait for 60 seconds. I'm going to do that and be right back. OK, we powered the box back up and we're just going to confirm that everything has been erased and nothing is there's no residual data there, which this is just a process that I go through to show you where it looks. I mean, how many megabytes it is now. So if you look, everything is still zeroed out. If you go back to the front, it's only 169 megabytes. You see that? 
So and to make sure the program sticks, it has to be higher than the 169 megabytes that you have there now. We're going to go into our updater installer app and you see in the top left corner version 2.4 we're going to go down to that click on it yes we want to install it and it's going to be downloading and extracting so rather than have you guys wait on hold on the video while this is happening I'm going to pause it and then pick back up after the extraction is done so remember it goes from downloading to extracting okay so I'm going to pause this and be right back Okay, as you can see, we're almost done with our downloading. Now it says download it, and then the final extracting. And the extraction doesn't usually take long, only about like maybe 60 seconds. You know, it could be faster, depends. So right now what it's doing, it's unpacking. So remember, as long as we have the build on the Pyromedia Center, and the Pyromedia Center is larger than 169 megabytes, then we know that the program stuck. And we're good to go at that point. I'm going to show you how we go in and we see that before you initiate the launch of the Pyro Media Center. So we're just going to wait a little bit longer for the extracting to get done. And then we'll go over into our settings again, where you'll get a chance to check and see how large the file is that is being held on the Pyro Media Center. And I may just pause it for a moment just not to have you guys on hold. I'll pause it. Okay, as you can see, the process is complete. So I'm going to click OK. And then we're going to hit Return on the menu. And we're going to go into our settings just to make sure that the file that's being held on the PMC is large enough. So we go into Apps. We're going down to the PMC. And we see it's 169, so it did not take. Um, we're going to have to unplug it again longer and that should resolve it so I'm going to go in and we're going to unplug it let me make sure there's nothing still in there and it's not unusual if you don't have it unplugged long enough for that to happen so I'm going to do that and be right back okay guys I just went through the process again and it's something about when I'm using a recorder that is not it didn't allow it to stick so we're going to go into it I just finished the extraction we're going to go into our settings over to our apps and then over to the PMC which you see is at 773 megabytes so it's higher than the 169 so that means the program stuck so we're going to hit return on the remote and we're going to go into the Pyro Media Center to launch it. It's going to do its first run install since we basically removed everything and just reinstalled it back on there. During this process, we're also going to want the add-ons to update since everything is being started from scratch all over again. And then we're going to connect our IPTV service. And we're going to finish it off by updating our TV guide. So that's the first launch of it. You'll see up top that we're on version 2.4 now. So that's how you know that you have the, the most current version by looking in the top left hand corner and seeing the 2.4. And we're just going to wait a while so that we can make sure any add-ons that needed to update update it normally takes a takes a few minutes now remember we scale this down but it is more powerful so we're not really confined to having all those different add-ons we're using covenant and we're using elithium so it's doing the pyro cleaner now to make sure there's no residual data in there and that solved the cache problem when you watch a lot of certain programs what happens is that it builds up all that stuff in the memory and it was locking people out the box so you see right now it's building the shortcut menu in the skin once that's done then we can proceed with adding our IPTV service
and it's writing the menu and we should be done shortly and then we're going to go right into the IPTV system okay so that was done so now we're going to go into our settings we're going to go down to add-ons my add-ons and then up to video add-ons we're going to go up to our IPTV service I'm going to click OK on it now remember you guys had took down the username and password so this is where you're going to put it in again and this one is a temporary one that I had set up just so that I can show you guys um, how to do this in the box so you're going to click on your settings and we're going to go up to username I'm going to click on that and I'm going to type in the username for this one and then the password once you have those both in you're going to hit OK and now we're going to go down to open if you typed it in correctly when you hit open you're going to see um, the options that it has on the side so you see the account information live TV catch up we're going to go down to our settings again because this box is a 2 gig box I want to show you what to do we're going to hit edit advanced settings and we're going to go down to enable the 2 gig of RAM or higher and that's just a performance thing I'm going to click on my cursor and then I'm going to go down to OK and click OK I'm going to hit return now now we're going into the extras this is where we set up the TV guide so we're going to go down to integrate with TV guide we're going to go down to the PVR IP TV guide and it's going to say that it needs to restart you're going to hit OK using the cursor about five times if you see up top 329 channels loaded and it's going to do it again and like I said we're still not sure why it does this we're going to actually look into incorporating a different guide so once we have that done we're going to now hit return and we're going to back up out of this all together and we're going to go back to our settings screen oh, I'm sorry we're going to go back into our um, our PVR so we hit add-ons again and then up here to the PVR client and the PVR client we want to go up to the IPTV simple client we're going to want to go down to settings and then we want to go over to EPG now what we're going to do is we got to set the EPG time shift so on the West Coast it's plus four East Coast it's plus one and then in Midwest plus two so I'm not sure why there's the big jump like you would think it's a three-hour thing and kind of play around around with it just to see we're going to go down to apply time shift and then down to OK and then we're going to click on our mouse cursor and then click OK on OK and we're going to back up out of it so now we have the, the, the PVR client set we have our TV um, subscription set up again and now we're just going to go back into the settings right here and we're going up to PVR service we're going down to guide we're going over to default action so default select action it says switch to channel you want to make sure that that's there and it doesn't say um, information which is let me see what it is you want to make sure it doesn't say show information you want it to switch to the channel when you click on it then we're going to go down to clear data yes and it's going to wipe everything reload the channels and reload the TV guide our guide has been been have some issues but we are fixing that so when you do this the whole guide will actually populate and show you're going to hit return and you're done so you have everything set up right now it uses elithium 
in Covenant. So when you click on Covenant, it's going to bring up everything with your networks, the languages, so you can still do a search. Even airing today, so you can see what shows that you like that are airing today. Or you can go into the TV calendar section and pull it up from there as well. So you have multiple places to pull that from. So as you can see, everything is set, set up and working. Your TV guide, um, if you click on live TV itself, it's going to bring up everything. And if you go to your live TV section, and you don't have to do it this way, I'm just, just showing you. If you go into your USA channels, you'll see that we have that guide working. So you can see that Storage Wars is on right now. Um, Hocus Pocus on ABC. So you see all these things. We're just trying to get the guide incorporated through the through the simple client. They went through some changes. And that's how you can see like what's coming up next if you were doing it this way. Or you can go into the guide itself, which we are fixing. So once we have it completely fixed, it will populate and have all the things. These are all the pay-per-view things that are on Puerto Rican channels. USA channels. So again, once we have the guide corrected, all of that will be populated for you so you'll see. So don't really concern yourself if you don't see it. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just something we're working on. So there you have it from start to finish, how to update your Pyro Media Center. We hope that we, you find this easy and that you're able to do this so that when we start incorporating different updates, you won't be dependent upon waiting for someone to do this for you. My name is Carlos Perez, guys. Thank you and have a great day.